To tell the truth, flew one of these young ladies to New York from blood-ravaged Italy because of her part in the heroic battle to save the priceless art treasures of the city of Florence. What is your name, please? My name is Alice Reed. My name is Alice Reed. My name is Alice Reed. Only one of these young ladies is the real Alice Reed. The other two are imposters, and we'll try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth. And now, here's our host on To Tell the Truth, Bud Collier. Thank you and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Good, good evening, evening Bud. Our second week. <laughs> yes, and they said it, it would never last. In the new night, <laughs> yeah, it will. All right, in front of you you'll find envelopes. Open up that one, if you will, please. It's marked with a number one, and follow along, please. I, Alice Reed, am an art student at the University of Florence. In early November, that historic city on the banks of the Arno River was hit by the most devastating flood in 700 years. The damage was staggering. Priceless paintings and sculpture by such immortals as Michelangelo and Cellini were covered with fuel oil, mud, and slime. Shops on the ancient Ponte Vecchio were smashed into rubble. We American students felt that we had to help save the treasures which have made Florence the art capital of the Western world. Dressed in blue jeans and sneakers, we shoveled tons of slime, transported irreplaceable paintings and sculptures to higher ground, and stood for hours in dark, dank cellars deep in mud, retrieving manuscripts and passing ancient books to safety along a veritable bucket brigade of students. The damage to the Florentine masterworks is beyond belief, and experts have estimated that the restoration of those works of art that can be saved will take at least 20 years. Signed, Alice Reed. <laughs> These three young ladies all claim to be Alice Reed. We'll start the questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you, Bud. What a wonderful thing you're doing. I'm delighted to meet you. Number three, what were the Ghiberti doors made of that were so surprising when they floated away? They were bronze, covered with gold. Uh, number two, why did they float? I don't believe they floated. They were dragged in a torrent of water and lodged in the mud. Number one, do you agree with that? Yes, I do. They were not, well... Uh, <laughs> Uh, number two, how deep was the mud in, in the streets? About four feet. The water was many feet above that. Uh, number three, is there any place one can send money? I've, I've already done something like that, but should we, should we mention it or should we talk about that later? I All think right. we talk about All that right. later. Uh, number two, was, was any of the countryside hit by this? I mean, wh why were there animals and, and in, in, in the debris? Within the city, there are a number of stables. There's a zoo. Um, you know, the Italians have wild animals where, or not wild animals, domestic animals where we don't. And they were killed. Number one, is, is it true that they were letting the, the, the prisoners out I of the prison? I hear faintly in the distance a little tinkle of a bell, and I'm afraid your time it. is up. I don't believe it. Tinkerbell. Yes, it's a tinkerbell tonight. Tom Poston. Thank you. Uh, Number one, are those floods all over now? Is that danger past? Well, not really. There have been a few floods the past week in the surrounding countryside in Florence. Gosh, a, a dreadful contingency about the artworks and so forth. Congratulations on your work for saving them, whoever you are. Number two, what are you going to do about, or what have the city fathers done about protecting their art treasures in the future from any such flood? I don't think they've really begun that. They never expected anything like this. And, for instance, every museum has a, every museum and every library has a different technique about uh, cleaning the books off or uh, drying out the canvases. I don't think it's that organized. Thank you. Number three, what was your subject in school? Um, well, I'm sort of unusual. I was a chemistry major for my first three years of college, and I didn't become an art historian until my senior year. Uh, okay. Peggy. Uh, thank you. Number two, is it going to be possible to restore all the baptistry, baptistry doors? Uh, they weren't. They were scratched. None of the uh, plaques were lost, so they'll just reinstall them. Thank you. Number <coughs> three, could you tell me what the American students are doing with the sodden manuscripts, how they're trying to fix those up? 
Uh, well, it's not the American students that are doing everything. Oh, I know that. You but know, I mean, well, what but are the kids doing? What are the kids doing? Books? Well, what we're doing is sort of like we're doing the the idiot work. We're putting the the paper in between the wet pages to dry them, but. Um, People have done things like they send it to tobacco drying rooms so that they'll be at a con constant temperature um, to facilitate drying of the of the books. But there's so many mil millions of books that are wet and damaged. And number one, was there any damage done to the Uffizi Gallery? Well, the whole first floor was completely flooded. And is that stuff all gone? No. Well, there's still a lot, quite a bit of mud around. It. Oh. Orson Mead. Number two, does Jacqueline Kennedy have anything to do with the American effort? To yes, vote? she's uh, the honorary chairman of an organization called CREA. Let me see this. It's all an right. organization for AIDS. Uh, number three, how many uh, volunteers uh, from all nations are involved? It's, it's an unnameable number. It's you, students you. from all over the world. That you know, Students from Europe that have spent summers oh. there. Americans that are going to school there. Number one, there's a famous a crucifix that was destroyed beyond repair. Do you know who did that? Timabue. Number two, uh, are there lots of Americans over there? Are lots of American students. A lot of students. A lot of students. Do uh, you have any idea how many? I'd say they, Florence is a city of students of right. all nationalities. Uh, they, were they ones that were there? That's all the time we have. I think about got our voice back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have time now to mark your ballots, if you will, please. Vote at once, without consultation and without change, once you've marked your ballots. Select, if you will, number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for each incorrect vote. Are your ballots all marked? We have much nicer crayons in the nighttime show. I know. <laughs> <laughs> With points, even. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, uh, Bud, I voted for number one. She struck me that... Uh, she would be a, an art student full of compassion for the great works of the past and would try to help out saving them. Peggy. Well, one looks as though she could be right out of an Italian artwork that was lost, but I voted for number three because she was quick to disclaim the fact that the Americans were doing it all, and you know, true blue type. Arthur. Well, when I snapped out those questions, number two snapped out those answers, so I had to vote for it. Oh, your two is underwater, I think. Yeah, I was a little, felt a little bad about that. Uh, you think you could be restored? I'm going to send some money over <laughs> to Italy. Kitty. I voted for number three. They were all absolutely sensational. And it could be any one of the three, and whoever it is, bravo. So the votes are all in. You heard the minds being made up and made up. Now let's find out which of these three young ladies in truth is Alice Reed. Will the real Alice Reed please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. And I must say we all add our uh, comment of well done to the, the work you're doing. It's it was a horrible tragedy, it really was. Material, great art, great art. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Elaine Benvenuto, and I'm assistant fashion editor at Bride and Home magazine. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Nancy McCarthy, and I'm a cub reporter for the Daily News. Panel, did you ever know a better brief panel, a uh, group of challenges no. in your life. Incredible. Great. Two Incredible. great liars. If you do that well for the <laughs> news, you'll go far. <laughs> Checking the score, we find that there were two incorrect votes, and they're each worth $250. So the grand total in your case, ladies, is to $500. And we thank you very much for gracing our show so prettily. Good night. God bless you. <laughs> requested that her share of the winnings be given to the newly established committee to rescue Italian art, and of course it shall be done. We'll meet our next team of challengers in just a minute, right after this message. And now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Pogo Pogue. <laughs> My name is Pogo Pogue. My name is Pogo Pogue. Panel, follow along, if you will, with this story. I, Pogo Pogue, am a disc jockey for station K.
KGMB in Honolulu, Hawaii. In a checkered broadcasting career all over these United States, I have participated in some rather wild promotional stunts. I lived 13 and a half days in a pit with 160 poisonous and non-poisonous snakes. I broadcast continuously from a flagpole for 96 hours. I rode on a roller coaster for 32 hours. And just recently, I spent 17 days, 17 minutes, and 40 seconds on a Ferris wheel. If you're wondering about my name, I got it by hopping 40 miles in 21 hours on a pogo stick. Signed, Pogo Pogue. And these three gentlemen are claimed to be, as you heard, Pogo Pogue. We'll start the cross-examination with Peggy Peg, uh, Peggy Cat. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, don't fool around with that last thing. Uh, number <laughs> three, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Pogue, number three, could you please tell me your theme song? <laughs> Stop it, Orson. I don't have one. You don't have a theme song no. on your show? No. Oh, okay. Now, number one, when you were in that pit with 13 and a half days of 160 poisonous and non-poisonous snakes, what did you wear? Hip boots? Um, I had uh, just the regular uh, hiking boots and a uh, safari uniform with a pith helmet and uh, khaki trousers. Well, were you separated from them, or were they just crawling all over your feet and everything? No, they were, they were in an air, very small area, about two, 12 feet square, something like and that. And you were outside the small area where they No, were... I was right inside. Uh -huh. Oh, well, what do you went Arson to Arson Bean. Number one, do snakes have bad breath? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me that once. You picture one of them looking at the other says, you have bad breath. Bad breath. <laughs> they don't, right, number one? It's a fallacious. Uh, they, they do give off an odor. Yes. They do, I yeah. Know, I don't know whether it's the breath or... <laughs> yeah, you never tried to keep away. Number, uh, number, number three, who's Jim Moran? You happen to know? Jim Moran's public relations. Yeah, and he does nutty things too, right? Uh, number two, what do, what do you think is the nuttiest thing you ever did? Well, I'm scared of snakes. Yeah, so that was it? That has to be it. How long did you, you sat on the flagpole? They must have smarted. Right? Kitty Carlisle. Number three, you were on a roller coaster and a Ferris wheel, and um, uh, what kind of um, seasick remedy do you use? Uh, a lot of rest afterwards. You're not seasick while you're doing it? Uh, in some cases, yes. Like in the Ferris wheel, I was seasick when oh, I stopped. What did you do? Oh, only when you stopped. Mm. How fascinating. Number two, did you have the snakes crawling all over you, too? Well, they were there at night. We went into a sleeping bag and they did a little crawling and but they were right there on the floor they could crawl around you or crawl over you no matter what we weren't protected from them by where any. did you eat food was sent into us and they didn't number one they didn't try to get your food oh no what about no tom posted number three uh you don't have a uh uh music that's identifiable with you or your show right number not three? specifically no that's very interesting do you know number three what wowing in means wowing in yeah uh, that is when you start a turntable and you do not start it specifically on an exact cue and the record will wow in. Number two, uh, I have a friend uh, who does the work of your kind in California. His name is Arbogast. Do you know this man? No, I don't. Number two, do you have recognizable music for, that identifies with you on your uh, disc show? Well, since I've been a boy, I've loved the Hawaiian watch chant, and I picked that one. Please. That's it. Time for you now to pick your own chance and mark your ballots, if you will, please. Mark them at once, without change, without any consultation whatsoever betwixt and between you. Vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Oh, Kitty lost her crayon, oh, but... <laughs> force yourself. I'll try to help her out here, but I can't do everything. <laughs> Oh, all right, there's your crayon back. I'm all about to mark the hat. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three, bud. Uh, I saw he was wearing a snakeskin belt and snakeskin shoes. I thought uh, then he got something out of that terrible experience with those reptiles. <laughs> Thank you, Cat. Well, I voted for number one because when I was a kid, I used to see a lot of those South Sea movies, and he looks like those guys that hang around the Pango Pango Cafe in the South Sea movies. <laughs> or in a wrinkled white suit. Right, right. What are you doing, Doc? Same old thing, brain surgery. <laughs> I, uh, I, had a, uh, I had a vote for number three because uh, he knew what wowing in was and because I could see stark terror in his eyes when two spoke of the snakes crawling over the sleeping bag. What kind of a 
snake is that That's calling the over number three? That's the most hated three? Gaboon Viper. The Gaboon Viper, I so hope. So call because he bites you in the... It's a we terrible... <laughs> Sorry, I asked. <laughs> Kitty. Well, I think it's probably number three, but I voted for number two. Because he looks like the kind of a jokester who would do that sort of thing. <laughs> Very well, there we have it with the votes all in. You heard the reasons and you know how they voted. So let's see which one of these gentlemen in truth is Pogo Pog. Will the real Pogo Pog please stand up? I must say, of all those stunts, the one with the snake seems to me the wildest. Uh, why did you do that? What gave you the idea to do that? <laughs> well, this was strictly a promotional thing, uh, Bud, with uh, one of our sponsors in Denver. It was in Denver that we did this. Well, and you uh, can't argue with that very well. And my can. boss says you will do it, so <laughs> I did. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? Uh, my name is Jim Powers. I'm a salesman for Parade Magazine. Thank you, sir. Number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Jacques D'Americo. I'm vice president of Films Plus here in New York. Checking the score, you did very well indeed. There were three incorrect votes. You caused them to cast three times $250 is $750, gentlemen. Thanks for being with us. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs> we'll be back with our next team and play another game in just a minute. But now, listen to this. Now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Wendell Phillips. My name is Wendell Phillips. My name is Wendell Phillips. Follow along with this one, if you will, please, panel. I, Wendell Phillips, am an archaeologist and explorer. Once at the invitation of the Iman of Yemen, I led an expedition into that forbidden country where we excavated the moon temple of the Queen of Sheba. Invited to the little-known country of Oman by the Sultan, I dug up the traditional home of Sinbad the Sailor. Because of my exploration and my help in his country's economic development, the Sultan of Oman gave me such huge oil rights that I now am the largest individual oil concession holder in the world. I was further honored by being named a sheik the only American ever to be awarded that title. My name in Arabic is Sheikh Hussein Ali Al-Harath, signed Wendell Phillips. Very well, panel. These three gentlemen all claim to be Wendell Phillips. We'll start with Tom Poston. Tom? Uh, okay, bud. Uh, number three, that Sheikh Hussein or Sheikh Hussein Ali Al-Harath, what does that mean uh, back in, um, in uh, Oman or whatever it is? Cassius Clay or something? What does that mean, number three? It means Sheikh Hussein Ali al What? <laughs> uh, thank you. Number two, what do you do with your, the oil that you own? Well, the, uh, we have a joint venture with City Service in Oman, and uh, it's been going about four years. they poured some $90 million into it so far. Don't tell me anymore. I'm so jealous I could cry. <laughs> number one, uh, when you found that home, traditional home of Sinbad, uh, how did you identify it? Well, it was not really the actual, the remains of the actual building. Sinbad is rep reputed to have come from so far in uh, northeast Oman. Thank you. Peggy Cass. Number three, under whose auspices did you first visit um, the Middle East? Under my own. You just went, uh, well, I mean, as, a, as, a, as an archaeologist or just to look around for where the oil was? As an archaeologist to look for archaeology. I see. <laughs> yeah, that's Thank you. Number one, do you have any dealings with the Anglo-Arabian Oil Company? I'm sorry, I didn't get Do you it. have any dealings with the Anglo-Arabian Oil Company? No. Thank you. Number two, is Oman near Kuwait? Kuwait is uh, 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 to the north and to the east. Thank you. Number three, could you tell me the difference between... Arson Bean. Number three, is Yemen near Oman? <laughs> Yemen is in the southwest corner of the Arabian Peninsula. Oman is in the southeast corner of the Arabian Peninsula. That's class. You really snapped that out, number three. Number, uh... 
<laughs> Number one, now, the Iman of Yemen. That's a great title. Do you know who the Nawab of Bhopal is? Oh, I'm afraid I don't. He's poorer than the Iman of Yemen, but they still got a buck. <laughs> Number two, uh, the Moon Temple of the Queen of Sheba. Tell me about this. Sounds very uh, delicious. Uh, what went on there? Well, it's uh, Remember, this is a family Queen of Sheba, as you know. <clears throat> yeah. I visited the... Uh, King Solomon. Yeah. Excuse my laryngitis. That's all right. Just go on with the story before the bell rings. You're just getting to the good part. (laughs) There it is. Kitty Carlisle. Number three, how do you pronounce Sheik in in Oman? You pronounce Sheik in Oman just like you pronounce Sheik here. I thought it was called Sheik. That's in Arabic. I'm sorry. Uh, Number two, (laughs) who dug up the Dead Sea Scrolls? There was a, uh, a man named John Trevor. Thank you. Uh, number one, what, did, what was Dr. Schliemann famous for? I don't know. Do you know number two? Yes, he was also interested in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Thank you. Uh, number three, when you get a sheikdom, do you get any ladies to go with it? That's oh, never all we have time for, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Talk about bells coming at the most inopportune times. <laughs> It's time to mark your ballots, if you will, please. So vote now, panel. Vote for the one you think is the real one, of course. And in so doing, mark your ballots for number one, number two, or number three. Borrow a crayon from first-rate Peggy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, All ballots are now marked. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I, I voted for number three. I, I stand corrected about the meaning of the Sheikh Hussein al, Ali al Harith in Oman. Why wouldn't it be that? That's right. But uh, I thought that he was just independent enough to be the richest single oil concessionaire in the world. So I voted for him. Thank you, Cass. I thought he was independent and honorary enough to be practically anything. So I voted for him. <laughs> Well, how could you help but vote for number three, but uh, it looks to me like he has a wash and wear shirt on. (laughs) 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 I had to, I think number one looks rich to me, and I figured that could be... Kitty. Yeah, well, I not? couldn't vote for number one because you've got to know if you're an archaeologist what Schliemann did. And number two said he knew about the Dead Sea Scrolls. But number three somehow struck me as the real one. So I voted for number three. Very well, there we have it. And we'll find out now with all these votes in which one of these gentlemen in truth is Wendell Phillips. Will the real Wendell Phillips please stand up? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Incidentally, Wendell Phillips is the author of a fascinating book based on his experiences, and it is called Unknown Oman. Right. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Thomas Gillis, and I help raise funds for Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. Uh-huh. What is your real name and what do you do, sir? Well, my name is Howard Larson. I'm head of a company that creates and manufactures displays. Thank you. And checking the score, we find they were a little smarter on this round, but they still got one incorrect, and that's still worth $250, gentlemen. Along with that, of course, goes our sincere thanks for having you visit our show. We hope you enjoyed it, too. Goodbye, and God bless you. We'll be back in a minute, but now this important message. And that's all we have time for tonight, except to welcome the guests that are greeting our panel. Good night, panel, and Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to all of you out there. Stay tuned, of course, for I've Got a Secret. And don't forget to join us same time next week. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon in the daytime show. In the meantime, don't forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Woodson, Bill Thompson production. CBS Reports examines the massive United States Food Air program on the Harvest of Mercy tomorrow night. Stay tuned now as I've Got a Secret celebrates the season with its annual Christmas show in color. This Carlisle's dressed by Bill Black. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth. Tonight's program was pre-recorded.
to tell the truth was brought to you tonight by General Foods, the makers of the refreshing dessert Jell-O Gelatin and other fine products.